Good evening. I'd like to call the special board meeting of Monday, October 30th to order. Sarah, would you read the roll, please? Bowerman? Yes, ma'am. Hallett? Here. McKeon? Here. Haas? Here. Romanski? Here. Tucker? Here. And Swanson? Good evening. We will move on to item number two, new business action items. Being that this is a special board meeting, we are only allowed a single line item. And it is most unfortunate that we have to have tonight's particular meeting. So I want to start off first and foremost by saying that I know I speak for the board uh, when I say that our thoughts and prayers are with, uh, with Gary and with his entire family. Uh, as a board and as a community, we receive news that nobody wants to receive. Uh, and that is that our superintendent needs to uh, take some time off to uh, take care of himself and his personal health situation. So as a result of his um, announcement to the board, I uh, did some work over the weekend and early last week and ultimately reached out to our personnel committee chair um, and the rest of the board via email on October 24th and advised them that they needed to begin reviewing their notes and taking a look at uh, how we might actually uh, resolve the situation we find ourselves in, which is needing a uh, new interim acting superintendent. So with that, uh, that is what we're going to discuss tonight. I would like to turn the topic over to board, uh, excuse me, personnel chair, Sean Hill. Thank you. Um, so like Scott said last week, he directed the personnel committee to start reviewing our notes um, from not too long ago. Three months ago, we had 17 candidates that we vetted for this position. And um, of those 17, a lot of them were actually were in um, roles right now. So, so clearly, they would not come help us for a interim, temporary interim role. Um, so we were left with a few that we were able to um, review. I also talked to several cabinet members about what our most pressing needs are at the moment and um, what their priorities are. It was really helpful to gain some insight from them as well. Um, and we also met as a personnel committee to discuss our options and I think it's fair to say that um, Tony, Matt, and I <coughs> independently um, and together have focused in on one particular candidate um, who we feel is a, would be a viable option for this situation, um, <coughs> especially due to the uniqueness of the situation and the uncertainty of the timeline that we're facing. We don't know if this is a month. We don't know if this is six months. We don't know what we're facing right now. Um, it was clear to us that one candidate <coughs> stood out, um, and we feel strongly in recommending that we move forward with discussing, continuing a conversation and discussing the possibility that John McBroom will be our candidate for a temporary acting interim superintendent. I wrote it down to make sure I could get all the words right. Um, I did reach out to him to ask him if he was interested in serving, and he is. Um, so much so that he gave me permission tonight to um, say his name and to have an open discussion about this. So at this point, I guess I would like to know your thoughts, concerns, questions, and what we should do moving forward. Did I get all that right, Tony and Matt? Yeah. All good? Yeah, I mean, we had our notes. We had to talk to several other people who were you know, available for this type of opportunity um, who are legends and John is a legend too and John knows so much and has so much equity in this district um, I mean I think his name appears on the opening plaques of four or five buildings right I mean he's opened a lot of buildings in our district he's worked with a lot of our staff a lot of our building principals and I had the opportunity to speak with a lot of building principals this weekend um, and everybody just kept suggesting uh, John's name so he clearly was the, the top possible candidate and I enjoyed a great conversation with him I think Tony did as well full lay of the land and you know came away even more impressed with his uh, his willingness to serve and his aptitude and being the right right fit for what we need right now um, and hopefully it, as Scott said hopefully it's very brief hopefully Gary's able to resume the reins uh, pretty soon but uh, John is certainly I, in my opinion the best candidate available for us and I agree because I mean yeah he's been in the situation he's been in our town 11 years I think right so it's as not an easy transition that we want to go through right now, but I think it's, it's the easiest 
avenue that we should go while obviously not just the easiest, but I mean he's knowledgeable of everything, so it's not like we're just hand picking the person into it. So, but I mean it's the easiest move. Mary? How long will he should they take? Yeah, I talked to him about that. He um, is willing for it to be as short as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, wishful thinking, you know, anywhere from a month to six weeks. Um, he is willing also to, uh, if circumstances are that we need him a little bit longer, he would be willing to serve until June 30th. Um, and I guess we didn't have, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't discuss any further than that, but. Um. How about the licensure question since he's retired? Can we address that? Yeah, talk to Bosa. Um, and he can get a one year variance that would end um, June 30th, 2018. No, 2018. So span the window that you just mentioned. Yes. Yeah, so we don't have any nope. uh, technical issues to deal with. Correct. Okay. <laughs> and I can tell you that <clears throat> having made a few calls to MDE and DeBosa and MSB and some other folks, um, although there's lots of boxes we need to check legally, there are those that recognize the uniqueness of our situation and they're willing to, um, very fortunately, work with us as a district uh, to make sure that we ultimately get the right person in here um, and keep the, uh, the wheels in motion. So, and that, your question was part of that I'm sure it was, yeah. And I also talked to um, <coughs> MSBA, and they were very helpful with some, providing some guidance and how quickly we can accomplish what we need to accomplish right now because, unfortunately, there is a lot of work that we are still facing right now, and we need <coughs> someone to help guide us and navigate these next few weeks and months so and they were very willing to work with us and help us ensure that we can accomplish this as quickly as possible any other comments or concerns um, just as a friendly reminder this the purpose of tonight's meeting is just to provide direction on how we're going to move forward and, and offer, if we decide to, uh, authorization and, um, to the uh, personnel committee to go ahead and engage in any kind of conversations or negotiations necessary. We would still need to come back and have another special session to ultimately uh, approve any recommendation that they would ultimately bring forward if it were to be uh, Mr. McBurmer's <coughs> And it's in terms of that special session, the soonest that could be by our posting rules, Sarah, is Friday morning? We're looking at sometime on Friday if that can happen. Correct. We do recognize the need to move quickly. As Sean would do, we have a lot of things in the air, a lot of things in flight. Um, so we definitely need to get somebody in that role for productivity's sake, but also for compliance, as you said, with, with BOSA and MDU. I would like to say too that after my conversation with him, it was clear that his intentions and sincerity in serving and helping us um, were pretty clear. And um, in part of Gary's superhuman efforts that he has <laughs> made in these last three months, one of the things that he has done um, is go have coffee on Friday mornings at McDonald's with a group of um yeah and john mcbroom also goes to that coffee on friday mornings and they've had a chance to, to talk and get to know each other and they have a level of respect for each other that i would say is um a huge positive for us in this situation so i don't have any additional questions the comment i would make and, and mary can speak to it much better than i could because she served with john for a number of years but i had the good fortune of my first two years on the board um, serving with John, and so I have nothing but the yeah, utmost respect for John, um, confidence in him, thankfulness that he's indicated his willingness to serve and step up in this capacity, and he brings a level of credibility and knowledge and experience that I don't think we can second guess at all, especially in this situation, so I'm very pleased that, that he's willing to do so. 
Sean, would you be willing to talk a little bit about some of the criteria that we were looking at, yeah. what we're looking for in a candidate to help everybody understand why we would? would yeah, um, obviously it would have to be someone um, who's willing to be incredibly flexible in their timeline, um, which would exclude any of the 17 candidates that we had previously vetted that are in a, um, a full-time position right now, which leaves um, some of the retired candidates. And um, while there are truly, like you said, or like Matt said, some, some pretty heavy hitters out there that would have been um, willing to have a conversation, uh, some of the criteria that we talked about as a personnel committee is um, knowledge of the district, um, relationships with staff <coughs> that we have here that could be very helpful moving forward, and to be honest, um, we are in a budget situation right now that doesn't allow us to go after the most expensive um, candidate, and I, I, I believe that we maybe found all three criteria in one individual. Um, at least that's my take. And not just cost, but some of them had some kind of parameters of how many days they wanted to work a week, and we don't need that. We don't want that. I mean, John does have a few things that he needs to step away for that he's already involved in, but I mean, it's a full, it's a schedule. It's, it's not very structured. I mean, it's, he's, he's here. He's on board if we, if we bring him. And the budget is one of John's strengths, right? <laughs> is, is writing the ship budgetarily. He's got a strong track record of that. I mean, Mary and Greg mm -hmm. served as part of that. So I, it was yet another reason why this is such a great fit. Can you share a little bit about if you've had any conversations about his feelings on me about academy approach? I touched on it really briefly with him, and his answer was, um, I don't know a lot. Um, but I'm willing to learn. And so he also said that whatever direction the board is taking, he will do everything in his power to implement it as successfully as possible. And he did ask me, or <coughs> mentioned that if he is the one that he wants to sit down with everyone, every one of us individually and find out like what our priorities are. So he can kind of, he can try to practice himself to figure out which ones can address and which one you can't. All right, any other questions or comments to me? Mary? I don't think we need to get into the weeds um, because this is what you guys to deal with in terms of the negotiations, but I'm assuming we can structure whatever agreement we put in place to be as open-ended as it need be because we don't have a timeline for Gary's return and we hope it's sooner rather than later. <coughs> we don't know if it's short, middle, or long, yep. and so we can, we believe, with Keith's assistance, we can structure an agreement in that fashion. Yep. Okay. Keith was in the meeting this morning with us, and we had we him looking, actually, today he was looking at two different uh, groups to get okay. help best to move forward. <coughs> and uh, John did say, super, retired superintendents do this all the time. Yeah. So they, well, I'm sure we're not, unfortunately, the first district that's ever run into a situation like this. <coughs> It's kind of when he left track, he went to the for Yeah, he thought it was going to be six months and it ended up being 13 years. Right. Although the circumstances were different. I'm yeah, saying yeah. A, a sudden health related issue, I'm sure, had arisen and people step up. Right? We're fortunate to have John. We are very fortunate to have him. We like to serve the I would agree. All right. Well, we do need to take formal action uh, to grant the authorization personnel committee and district administration to seek temporary acting interim district leadership and negotiate a mutually agreeable temporary contract with our action on the table. Roll we'll call her. Do we need a roll call on this, do you think? Uh, they certainly can, but I, I don't know that you would need to. I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't this think you need to either. Yeah. I'll could. make that motion. Sean, okay. Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. And we'll move on to item three, adjournment. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. 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 Motion.
Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye